the camera because <laughs> this is very a delicate situation that my camera's in. But my name's Adrian. I'm the president of Math Club. And um, so welcome, everyone. Uh, and um, so do the other uh, Math Club eboard want to introduce themselves? Oh, hello. I am Julian. I'm the vice president. Uh, oh, it's good. I'm, I'm Dan. I'm the treasurer. <laughs> Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Spencer, I'm the librarian. And uh, I'm Mark, and I'm the secretary. Okay, so, um, I guess Mark, you can start recording and I will get things ready. Okay. Oh, where's my glue? Okay. So yeah, uh, what you need for this uh, activity is a ruler, um, a pair of scissors, a glue stick. Um, what else? A compass or a protractor. And um, uh, eventually we'll use some markers. But first, um, let's just get started with the ruler and pencil. So um, I guess I should start by saying what, what do we want to do? We want to create something called a hexaflexagon, which is an object that looks like um, one of these things. Right? So these are hexaflexagons and uh, what you can do with hexaflexagons is you can flex them. So, for example, this one can be flexed like that. All right. So we're going to try to create hexaflexagons and then a ask a certain mathematical question about them. So first, let's try to make a hexaflexagon. The first thing you need to do is have a sheet of paper, and we're going to try to create this strip from, uh, uh, we're going to try to create this strip. So let me uh, bring up a video. Um, just give me a second. Okay, yeah, so I found the video. I'm gonna post the video in the chat and also uh, share my screen to show you uh, the instructions for making this hexaflexagon. So, okay, so So what we need is some paper. And the first thing we want to do is create this straight line. Like this. All right, so let me just um, show this on paper. So what we want to do first is create a straight line on the sheet of paper on this bottom edge. Right. 
Um, this paper is a little bent, so I'm going to use a different sheet of paper. Okay, here. Um, so close to the edge of this sheet of paper, I'm going to just create a straight line. So now we have a straight line, and um, what we want to do is mark off um, one inch along the straight line. So um, if you have a ruler um, that has inches, then uh, since a paper is 11 inches long, you can break this up into 10 line segments like this. Right? So, um, so far we should have um, a straight line divided into 10 equally spaced line segments. Um, is this part so is this part good so far? Everyone do like some type of reaction if you're good. I'm still going. All right. So ultimately what we want to do is create this, this kind of strip. And so far what we've done is created the uh, bottom edge of each of these triangles. Um, someone else just joined. So maybe just like go over just like briefly what you did so far. Yeah, so what I did so far, I started with a blank sheet of paper. I took a ruler and just made a straight line across the bottom edge like this, and then I marked off one inch um, using the ruler. Um, and you want 10, every, 10 yeah. spots? Yeah, yeah. Because a page is, a standard page is 11 inches long, so you can make 10 marks on the page. So let me know if you've uh, gotten this bottom uh, line with 10 marks on it. So who's ready to go move on? Okay. So I'll I'll continue with the process. So once we have all of these marks in a line, what we want to do is create the peaks of the triangles. So this is where the compass comes in. So you can use the compass 
to mark off X's like this. So let me demonstrate what to do. So you have this compass, right? Um, using the compass, uh, measure off one inch as you've marked it. And then mark a, an arc like this and do the same thing the other way. Also, if you don't have a compass, but if you have a protractor, we're making equilateral triangles. So if you measure an angle of 60 degrees for like each dot and then draw a line, you'll get what you need. Yeah. Let me show how to use the compass one more time. So you make an arc the length of an inch in both directions and wherever they cross that is going to be the top peak of the triangle so we can do this with a lot of our intervals to get these top peaks. Um, and like Julian was saying, if you have a compass instead, well, I don't have a compass, so I can't demonstrate this. Julian, uh, do you want to demonstrate the, how to use the compass? A protractor, I think. Oh, I mean, oh, oh, I mean protractor. But, yeah, I don't. Let's see if you can see my piece of paper down there. Basically, here's like one of my little dots, right? You know, you line the protractor up on the dot. measure 60 degrees and then you can um which dot did i use i use this one and then you can draw a line there and then go to the dot that's right next to it and measure 60 degrees again and then And then they intersect and these like where they where the lines intersect each other is um, going to come into play in like the next step. Yeah, so so for the person that said so that the protractor and compass broke, since these are equilateral triangles, you could pretty much eyeball it. Uh, like if you go halfway in between your two lines, then it's going to have um, like the the middle thing is going to have a height of um, Radical three over two, so like point eight six six inches. Yeah. Or you can in make a, or you can make a third. Uh, you can make a sixty degree angle out of the corner of a piece of paper folded in thirds, and then take two thirds of it. Okay. 
So now I have all of these. Um, I missed one. So once you have um, these um, points of intersection, uh, where the top points of these triangles will be, you can get a get your ruler again and um, draw a line through all of these points. So I'm going to show this in the video so you can see how she does it in the video as well. So first she's making a bunch of crosses. And then she uses the ruler to get the line through all of the crosses. So once you have this line, you can go ahead and use the ruler to make all of the triangles like that. So let me show what's the next step. You take the ruler and between every uh, edge that you want to create for a triangle, right, remember we are trying to make this kind of strip. So at this point, all we have to do is connect the dots. So you should have a bunch of triangles. Um, I think we need, okay, so let's count how many triangles we need. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we need to have 19 triangles. And um, so we're gonna cut this out. Let's Let's follow what this, this lady is doing so she cuts out 19 triangles right okay um, so her process is a little bit different but what we want to do is count um, 19 triangles so uh, excluding this half triangle so the ones that we don't need we can just shade in so we don't need this half triangle at the end and um, we don't need these triangles at the end either. Right, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 triangles. And what you wanna do um, is take your pair of scissors and just cut out this strip of 19 triangles. I'm just going to cut this up.
So you should be left with a strip of 19 triangles like this. Let me show the video. So she does something a little bit different, but ends up with a strip of 19 triangles. And the next step after that is to fold up each of the triangle. So. Um, so what we want to do is for each edge of this strip, we want to fold up along this way, make a solid crease, and also fold the other way. So for every, um, so I think there's a lot of background noise coming from there. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So um, just fold along each edge of the page.
Okay. So what you have now is a strip of 19 triangles and um, it has creases along every edge of the triangle, of each triangle. Um, okay, so if everyone is okay with moving on, um, what we wanna do is label the faces of each triangle along with this pattern. So we have, so it's a little bit hard to see. We have one, two, three, 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 zero. So um, I'm gonna have one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And this is the sign for glue. Um, and then flip it over. And on the back, we're going to have glue four, five, four, four, five, five, six, six, four, four, five, five, six, six, four, four, five, five, six, six. So glue four, four, five, five, six, six, four, four, five, five, six, six, four, four, five, five, six, six. Is anyone not caught up yet? Okay, I think we're good then. Okay. Um, all right, so now that we have this, so the most complicated step is to fold up the hexaflexagon. So let's, let's show how it's done. So here, this person has colored each face according to number. So one, two, three, 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 glue, glue, four, four, five, five, six, six, four, four, five, five, six, six, four, four, five, five, six, six. Okay, so what you want to do is coil up the strip so then you get a smaller strip like this, right? So um, let me show this here. So on, on the other side of the hex of, uh, on, of the strip, so the side that has um, the fours and the fives and the sixes, um, fold, right, so fold the fours onto each other. How do you guys get, how do you guys only get 19 triangles? Um, so cut off the extra ones. If you, if you have X, if you have more than 19 triangles, cut them off. Right. I'm glad um, some people are able to follow. I know it's hard to follow through a Zoom lecture. Um, so let's fold the fours onto each other like this. Right. If you've gotten to this stage, give me a thumbs up. All right, I see, I see a few thumbs up, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so now we have a one, two, five, five. So what we want to do is fold the fives onto each other. Right. Right. And then look on the other side again. Keep it coiled like this and fold the sixes onto each other. So we are just going to continue folding the fours onto each other. 
the fives onto each other, the sixes onto each other, and so on. So event, essentially what we're doing is we're coiling this strip around itself to get a smaller strip. So the fact that, <laughs> that my strip is uneven means I didn't fold it very well. But um, you get a strip with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten triangles. Um, is anyone um, still confused about how to coil this? strip of 19 triangles to get a strip of 10 triangles. Would anyone like to see it again? Um, I'll just do it again quickly. So I'll have it for myself. So I'm just coiling this up like this. So we have a smaller strip of 10 triangles. Okay. All right, now let's show the next step. Um, not this one. So what she does here is coil this up to get the strip, the smaller strip of 10 triangles. And this is sort of the hardest part in the process of construction. You want to fold it up into a hexagon like this. All right, so let me show this slowly. Uh, once you have the smaller strip of 10 triangles, go to the side which has the glue triangle. So here's one glue triangle and there's another glue triangle. And then look at um, the faces with ones. So these two things are ones and fold the ones together. So let me show this over here. that away. So this is the side of the smaller strip with 10 triangles and these two are the ones. So I'm going to fold this up so that the ones touch each other. So I get this thing. So it has this folded over. The next part is fold like that. All right. So, so once you have the ones folded over each other, um, you want to fold these two triangles together, this one and this one. Let me see what they're on the other side, there are also ones. So let me show it over here. Once you have this, by the way, if you are confused about any step, just, um, just interrupt me and tell me um, I'm confused about something. So once you have this shape, remember we folded the ones onto each other. Um, on the other side of here, there are two ones and you wanna fold them together. And once you're at this point, move the bottom uh, flap over onto the top. Uh, 
Um, would anyone uh, like me to do that again? I'll just do it again. So once we have, So we have this strip of 10 triangles. Then we go to the side, which has the glues like this and um, hold it like this, fold the two ones together. And then where it has a two and a three on the opposite side, there will be two ones, right? So you wanna fold the two and the three together like this, and then move this bottom flap over to the top. If you're good with this, um, give me a thumbs up. Awesome. I'm gonna continue, but if you want me to repeat anything, just let me know. Okay. On the so now, if you flip this over, you're you're gonna see two glue spots, and take your glue stick and glue these two faces together. These two circles are going to get glued together. Right. And if you've got that, then you've made a hexaflexagon. Awesome. I'm just going to quickly do it again. It's you fold uh, so. The short strip with 10 triangles, fold the two ones together. And then where you have a two and a three, um, on the opposite side, you're gonna have two ones. And then you wanna fold those two ones together. And then bring this flap on the bottom to the front. And on the opposite side, you're going to have two places for glue and, and glue these two spots. Okay, so now we have a hexaflexagon. Let me finish this video. She folds like this, brings that to the front, and then just glues those two pieces together. Okay, so if you were able to follow along, then congratulations, you made a hexaflexagon. And now what you can do with this hexaflexagon, you can fold two faces close to each other like this, and then push this one inwards. And you should be able to flex the hexaflexagon like that. I finally did it correctly. <laughs> nice. So, like that. And a natural question to ask is what are the various states that you can reach inside a hexaflexagon? So you notice on this side, we have all ones. And on this side, we have all threes. 
right? But if I flex like this, I reach a side with all twos. So the three side disappeared. It went inside of the hexaflexagon, but the two side surfaced. And the natural question to ask is, what do all of the, so, so this face that you're seeing right now, this is a state of the hexaflexagon. And when I flex it, I enter a different state. So this one is fives. And a natural question to ask is, what are all the possible states that you can reach by flexing the hexaflexagon? My hexaflexagon is stuck. What do I do? Um, like it's not opening up. It's, it's hard to diagnose a problem when, I, when I'm not there. But um, uh, oh, okay, it's working now. Is it is it working? Okay, good. It might be because like the folds were uh, the 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 lines or the folds were imprecise, and that's making it difficult to flex. But um, let's try it a little bit, and um, it might get easier the more you flex it. All right. Okay. So now we have a hexaflexagon. And um, the question we want to answer is, what are the possible states that we can reach by flexing this hexaflexagon? Um, so to make it a little bit clearer which state we're in, I'm going to color the faces that we reach. Um, okay, let me. So this is where you, your marker is coming. Um, let me reach the one state. I'm just trying to randomly get to a different state. So the so the so the activity that I'm suggesting for you guys to do. How do I get to ones? Right, so 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 you see you, you see the problem, right? So I am at some arbitrary state. I'm at two, and I want to get to the ones, but I don't know how to get there. Um, I'm just doing random moves right now. I got to two. I got to four. I got to three. I got back to two, and, and now I'm at ones. So, um, just uh, someone in the chat. Ask, yep. um, is it 36 total combos? 36 possible states? Um, I, I know why you're suggesting that because you're, you're thinking, well, we have six different characters and then six different faces showing up. So it's going to be um, six times six possibilities. All right. so that's 36, right? Um, you meant front and back. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit um, confused by what you mean by front and back, but oh, I see. So you're saying if I have a one on this side, and I have a two on this side, you're thinking possibly I could get to a state where I have a one on this side and a, a different number on the other side. Oh, I see, I see your reasoning. You're saying I could have all ones on this side and then another arbitrary number on this side. But you know, if you have all ones on this side, then you can't have all ones on the other side, right? So it can't be six times six because, um, there's some uh, double counting that goes on when you do that. But that is a nice uh, hypothesis. We're gonna figure out how many states there are in this hexaflexagon and the total uh, map 
of various states. Like uh, what I mean by map is by uh, a diagram which shows us where we are in the space of various states and what moves we have to make to get to any particular destination. So if I wanna get from one to three, then this diagram is gonna tell me I have to move once in this way and then once that way and once that way to get to three. So that's, that's the goal of this activity. And um, I would ask you guys, those of you who do have a hexaflexagon and were able to create this, um, play around with it and try to um, discover for yourself what this graph would look like or, or what this space of various states of the hexaflexagon would look like. If you don't have a hexaflexagon, um, you can just follow along with me. Um, I'm going to color the ones red. Oh, maybe I'm running out of ink. Kind of sucks. So every time we get to reds, um, we know that these are ones. So this is, if this is your first time making a hexaflexagon, then you can just color it all in a solid color like I'm doing. But if you wanna get creative, then you can create your own pattern on these faces as well. For now, I'm just gonna make it a solid color. So I have ones, and to represent the state of one, I'm going to make a dot, just a dot of red. So this this point represents the state uh, of of one, or rather red, that I have. Now, once I make one flex like this, I'm going to reach three. So what I do in my diagram is I make a line like this and I point it towards um, uh, uh, another, uh, another dot, which I'll color yellow. It might be hard to see yellow, but I'm going to color that yellow and also color this face yellow. So this, this thing that I've drawn here is indicating that starting at this red state, I can flex to get to the yellow state. Now I'm going to flex one more time and let's see where we end up. Uh, I got to two. Um, I'm going to color two orange. Before, before I make the spot here, I'm just gonna color this up.
And um, so I'm just gonna check if I can go back to the red state from this too. And I can, right? So what that tells me is from orange, I can go to red. So I can start at ye uh, yellow, go to orange, and then go to uh, red. Red, so we have red, and then we can go to yellow, and then go to orange. So this is a, a three cycle in our diagram. This is, we can depict this like this. We start at red, and then we can get to yellow, and then from yellow, we can get to orange, and then from orange, we can get back to red. So this is a three cycle in the diagram of various states that we can get. So this is, this is uh, encoding what we see when I just continuously flex along this three cycle. So red, yellow, orange, red, yellow, orange, red, yeah. red, uh, yellow, oops, actually, yellow, orange. But these are not the only possibilities that I could go because from red, you saw accidentally, instead of flexing, instead of pinching these two faces together and flexing to get to the yellow face, I could instead, instead of pinching these two, I could instead pinch these two and I will get to a new face, five. Um, let me color five blue. I'm going to color five blue. And if you and if you have your own hexaflexagon that you were able to create, um, I suggest that you um, map out the possible states that you are achieving in your hexaflexon as well. So I know it's kind of difficult to do your own thing while you're listening to me speak, but. This is the best we can do over Zoom. And I noticed that from this five state, I can reach the orange state. So that's a different three cycle that we have. Red, blue, orange. Red, blue, orange. So let's denote that here. So we have red, blue, orange, like this. So we've we've discovered we've discovered two distinct three cycles in our space of states for this hexaflex gun. Right now I'm at orange, and from orange I can move to red, and then blue, and then orange. So that was going around like this. But also from orange, I can move to yellow. Uh, it's, it's a little sticky. Oh no, I can't. I can't move to yellow. So you, you see, um, I was trying to flex uh, from. I, I was trying to flex forwards, like trying to pull this open, but I couldn't. And, and you see, that's the that's where the directionality of this arrow comes in. I could get to yellow by flexing backwards. Wait, actually, no. If I flex backwards, I just get to blue. So that's going backwards along this edge. But um, 
I can only go forwards from orange to red. And then from red, I can get to yellow. And from yellow, I can get to orange. OK. Um, so from red, I was able to get to yellow. And from red, I was able to get to blue. Is there anywhere else I could get to? And the answer is no. I just checked all of the openings, I can only get to yellow or blue. Um, by the way, what time is it? It's 8.33. We started at 7.30. Um, I'll try to finish up. It's already been an hour, so I'll try to finish up in like 12 minutes. So we finish by 8.45. Okay, so what I'm doing here from red, I can get to blue. And from blue, uh, I can get to orange. But can I get anywhere else from blue? Um, I don't think so. Wait, I can get to orange. Uh, nowhere else. Okay, from orange, I can get to red. But is there anywhere else I can get to? Um, nope. Okay. And from red, I can get to yellow and blue, but not anywhere else. So from yellow, can I get to anywhere else? Um, let's see. Yellow, I can get go forwards to six. So this is an undiscovered face so far. Six, I'm going to call it purple. So now I'm at six, and I got to six from yellow. And um, let's see where I can get from purple. From purple, I can get back to red. So that looks like another three cycle that we have. So yellow, um, yellow, purple, red. Yellow, um, purple, and red. So let me uh, fill that in. So I have this state here where I can go from yellow to purple, purple to red. Yellow. Did I go from yellow to red? That's red, red to... Okay. Red to yellow, okay. Oh, I just noticed something. Um, if I, if I, instead of uh, looking at it from this perspective, um, so yellow is on front, I can go from yellow to orange like this. But if instead I flipped it over and now I'm at the red side, um, I can go from red to purple. So if I, 
if my uh, perspective is on the back side, then all of these edges, directed edges, will be flipped over. Um, it's just a matter of perspective. Since I am on the front side, all of these edges are moving forwards. So I got a little bit confused because I was like, wait, uh, yellow is going to red, but that's because I, I somehow flipped this over while I was doing this thing. Okay, so from purple, I can get to red, and from red, I can get to yellow, and from yellow, can I get to anywhere else, right? From yellow, I can get to orange, And uh, so that looks like that's it for yellow. For yellow, I can get to purple or I can get to orange, right? So now let's check out the states for purple. Right, so from purple, I can get to red, sure. But also I can, can I get anywhere else? Uh, I don't think so. So I'm a little bit confused. Because there should be a green somewhere, right? Um, maybe I glued two faces together. I don't know. I got to my fifth side from two. Two? So two was orange, right? Uh, oh, yeah, I wasn't coloring then. Let me get to two, All right? So now I'm at two and then from two, I can get to blue. Wait, no, wait, why can I get, oh shoot. Maybe I was holding it wrong. Two, I can get to blue. So I guess I'm holding it the wrong way. Um, two, I can get to red, but also can I get anywhere else? So weird. I can get to red, but can I get to fifth side? I don't think so. This is really. This is what I got for mine. Maybe I did it wrong. Yeah, so that's that's perfect. That's what should it should look like. Um, um, I think I have one that actually works here. Purple. Uh, I might have called this another way. So I'm holding this wrong way. Purple to orange. Yeah, this is weird. Um, I think it's worth noting that there yeah. are different types of the same face. Um, so like if you get to one face, all you right. Not be able to go, like, like when you're on the purple face, for example, you're not always on the same purple face. And oh, that, like, the, I to yeah. I totally forgot about this. Thank you so much for pointing that out. Um, 
So if you draw like a, a circle on the inside, like around the center, and then go a different route, you can end up with that circle being kind of uh, cut apart and put on the corners of the hexaflexagon. Mm. Right, right. So, so I had red, and then from red, I could get to orange, and then from orange, I could get to yellow. Um, from yellow, I can get to Yeah, yeah, that's 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 a really good point. So um, I think I was mapping this out <laughs> the wrong way. I'm sorry. Let me let me hold this here just for reference. Um, the way that wasn't working out, and um, let's use the suggestion that um, who who was the one speaking? Austin. Austin. Okay. So thanks so much, Austin, for reminding me of this important fact. So we have this this red here. And uh, the, the suggestion that was brought up is that perhaps, uh, oh, or like, yeah, the red face that we achieve when we, okay, so this red face might be different from a different red face. So here, this is red, and then I can get to orange. Um, let me denote this here, like that. But also from this red, I can get to um, purple. So let me uh, write that like this. Um, is there anywhere else that I can get to from this red? I don't think so. I think there are only two places. So, so from this red spot, I can only get to two di distinct faces. Now let's move on to the orange spot. And from this orange spot, I can move to yellow. Um, let's move to yellow. Like this. And um, let's check where else that we can move to from orange. So from orange, I can move to blue as well. Um, let me get the blue. Right. So from this orange, I have two spaces, two states that I can access. I can go to yellow or I can go to blue. Uh, and those are the only two places I can go to. All right, now let's go from orange to yellow. Right. And now at this yellow, um, let's ask the question, what states can we go to? From this yellow, I can go to red. And now the, I want to ask the question that was brought up. Is this red the same red state as this one? So let's go. Uh, let's see where we can access from this red. From, so from red, I can go to purple. And from red, I can also go to orange. So it looks like this red is this exact same red as this one because this red can go to orange and purple. So that looks like a legitimate three cycle. Um, let me go back to yellow and let's see where else yellow can go. Um, it doesn't look like yellow can go anywhere else. Okay. All right, now let's go from red um, back to orange. And from orange, let's go to blue. And then from blue, let's see if I can go anywhere else. Oh no, it's ripping up. Oh shit. From blue, I can get to red, but now, now this is the question. Is this red the same as that red? 
So let's see where we can access from this red. From this red, I can get to orange. Um, and my whole hexaflexagon is getting ripped up. Oof. Um, and also I can get to I think I can, I can get to orange. I think it, it looks like, hmm, I'm not actually sure. Uh, I'm just gonna potentially say this is a red. Okay, from this red, uh, it's, this thing is getting ripped. from yellow and then, oh, let's check out, hmm. so orange. Okay, let's see if this uh, yellow is, can get anywhere else. So this yellow can get to four. And, I lost my place. I don't know if this is the, if this is this yellow. All right. Maybe it's, maybe it is. Okay. So, color this green. Okay. Um, it's 8.49. Um, I for sure am going to end by 9, 9 p.m. Just give me, <laughs> give me... You also maybe like show the one that you completed the other day and be like, oh, if you keep doing this, you'll get here eventually. I don't know if it's taking too long. Yeah, okay. If I get to 9 p.m. and I still can't figure this out, then I'll just show the answer. But okay, so now I'm at green, and then I want to check what else I can do. From green, I can get to orange, but is this this orange? Let's see, this orange. I can get to yellow only. It looks like you can only get to yellow. Can't get to anywhere else. And since this orange could go to blue, but this one can't go to blue. It can only get to yellow. It seems like this is a distinct yellow. Or this, this is a distinct orange in that one. So I'm going to put that up here. So this particular orange that we're at can only go to yellow. It can't go to, it can't go to blue. So it's not, it's a different orange than this one. Right. So this orange can go to yellow, but it can't go to blue. Wait, it could. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I, I, I give up actually. I think I'm just gonna show this one. So this is much better made. It's a flex gun. And, um, This is the diagram that we got. Um, so here, let's see if this is the actual one. So now this looks like, this does not look like. Let's see, yellow, red, orange. So, okay. So this is something that I figured out beforehand. So let me just show you <laughs> what the actual state space diagram looks like. So here I'm at orange and from orange, I can get to yellow and from yellow, I can get to red and from red, I can get back to orange. Um, let me show you 
a different orange that's up here. So I go up to yellow and then from yellow, I can go to green. And then from green, I can go to orange. And then this orange is distinct from this orange because this orange could go to purple, but this one can't, All right? Um, let's see, this one can only go to yellow. It's not able to go to purple. Um, all right, let's go back down to um, here. So now we're here. And this yellow, uh, this orange can go to purple. And the purple can go to red. And this red is distinct from this red because this red could go to blue, but this red can't. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now let's go back to orange. Let's go to yellow and then back down to red. And let's show that this red can go to blue. This red can go to blue. And then it can go to yellow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, I want to end uh, the 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 meeting here, or more or less, because um, this is this is kind of what I wanted to say. So what I wanted to say is like this hexaflexagon has various states, and um, we can map out these states by this kind of state space diagram. And the point is um, some color, the, the colors are not enough to distinguish the states. Um, as um, someone was saying, um, we can distinguish the states by placing a little dot in the middle of the hexaflexagon. So here's a hexaflexagon which where I've placed um, some dots in the middle, right? So for example, here, this orange, um, if I flex a little bit, I don't know, um, it's going to be distinct from another state of the orange um, where, where, the, where the dots get moved around. So now, so now the dots are not in the center anymore. So that kind of that kind of uh, distinguishes between the two different states that we have over here. One, uh, these are actually different states of the diagram. So to answer the question, how many different states of a hexaflexagon do we have? Well, we have one for each vertex in this diagram. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so there are nine different states of this hexaflexagon. And um, yeah, and this is the state space diagram of the hexaflexagon. There are also other types of flexagons. So this is called a hexa hexaflexagon because we have six colors. We started with six colors and this is in the shape of a hexagon. But you could have hexaflex you could have hexaflexagons which have more than six colors or only have three colors. So this one is a trihexaflexagon because it only has three colors. It has yellow, pink, and orange. And so this was created with only 10 triangles from the beginning, whereas this one was created with 19 triangles from the beginning. So this has three faces. It's a trihexaflexagon, and this has six colors is a hexa hexaflexagon. You could also have more than six colors and the prefixes changes. And a natural question would be, what, is, what are the state space diagrams for those other hexaflexagons? And so, yeah, that's basically um, all for this meeting. Thanks for joining me. And um, yeah, if you wanna stick around, you can. If you wanna ask some questions, but I guess Mark should end the recording here.